Hello and welcome to our 184 currently attendees joining us from across the US and the globe. Thank you for tuning in to Boston University's genealogy program webinar hosted here in Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Sarah and I am moderator for today's session alongside our host and new program director, Melissa Johnson and BU's genealogy program enrollment advisor, Amber Nolan. We will be conducting a live questions and answers session at the end of our presentation. So please be sure to use the questions box in your attendee control panel to submit questions throughout the duration of the webinar or during the Q&A session. We'll try to address as many questions as time allows. All right, so we appreciate your interest in the rigorous courses offered by Boston University as you hone in on your genealogy skills as either a serious hobby or as a future profession. During today's presentation, we will discuss the two courses offered at BU, Genealogical Principles and the Certificate in Genealogical Research, also the curriculum covered in each course, some course logistics, and the registration process. I would now like to introduce the Genealogy Program Director, Melissa Johnson, Certified Genealogist. Melissa joins us today as the newest program director for the BU Genealogy Studies Program with three years of teaching staff and 14 years of experience as a practicing genealogist, a national lecturer, educator, and author. And much of her work has been distributed in well-known genealogy journals, magazines, and other publications. And now, Melissa, I'll turn the presentation over to you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to start by sharing a little bit of my genealogy story. Uh, I've actually been researching my own family history since I was about eight years old. It started with a school autobiography project that had a lot of different components to it. Family history was just one of them. And I sort of set aside all the other components and I really was interested in the family history. And that's what sort of started this lifelong hobby turned career for me. Um, <clears throat> a couple of interesting things that I've found over the years um, have really involved some other members of my family in genealogy as well. So that's been fun, especially with the introduction of DNA testing and genealogy as becoming a, a much bigger hobby than it was several years ago. Um, two of the key people that kind of also sparked an interest in my having um, this hobby and turned career as a genealogist were my two grandfathers. Um, so you can see pictures of me as a child sitting with both of them. <clears throat> my uh, paternal grandfather down below, he actually had a interest in genealogy when he was older. So this was in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, he was writing away, sending away for records on his mother's family because she died when he was young and he never knew her. And my dad, very, I always say very irresponsibly, gave his 10-year-old daughter all of my grandfather's genealogy papers when my grandfather died when I was 10. Um, and that sort of uh, sparked my interest after having that initial interest from my school autobiography project. Um, my maternal grandfather, who is uh, the photo, that's me with him in the photo up on the top. Um, he uh, didn't have much knowledge of his family. His father, or who he thought was his father, left the family when he was a young child. Um, <clears throat> and the story, uh, which goes back to the black and white family photo on the bottom left, the story was always that my great grandmother pictured there was pregnant with him in this picture and her husband had just left. Uh, fast forward 15 years later, and DNA uh, reveals that that man was not his father, uh, that someone else was. So my grandfather had a different father than all of his siblings who are pictured there. So <clears throat> that's you know a little bit of what sort of got me interested in genealogy and has helped maintain my interest over the years. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I'm a practicing genealogist. Uh, I'm often out in libraries and archives researching, uh, also researching online as well. Um, so we're gonna get into some of the programs that BU has to offer that will hopefully further your interest in genealogy and perhaps spark a, a new career or a new lifelong hobby for you. Um, the Boston University Genealogy Studies Program 
programs. Um, there are two of them. One is genealogical principles, which is a seven week program. And the other is the certificate in genealogical research, which is a 14 week program. So these two programs uh, <clears throat> are very different. Um, genealogical principles is for genealogy enthusiasts um, that who, who want to basically expand their knowledge a little bit more. Um, the certificate program is for people who perhaps already took the genealogical principles course or have a little bit more experience with genealogy. Uh, and we have a great quiz on our website that can help you determine uh, which program might be best for you uh, if you're on the fence and maybe somewhere in between uh, not sure of which one to take. A little bit about the genealogy principles program. Um, again, this is a seven week program. Um, it's not as fast paced as the certificate program, but it does cover a lot of great material. Um, some of the elements that you'll work on here are basically getting a good knowledge of what the key terms and concepts are in the genealogy field. And this will really serve as a foundation to make sure that when you're discussing evidence and documents and proof that you are using the right terminology when you speak to others, but also so that you understand that, which helps you with your internal thought process of analyzing evidence and making kinship determinations uh, and advancing your research. Uh, it focuses also on the genealogical proof standard, which in our field is exactly what it is. It's a standard of proof for uh, establishing relationships and identity and kinship. Uh, and in this program, you also will learn about a lot of great new resources that you may not be familiar with, both online and offline, uh, different strategies for researching, um, and then also it covers DNA as well. So DNA, in an introduction to it, and the other programs, uh, the other the certificate program does provide um, a little bit more knowledge on DNA as well. So this program, again, is set over seven weeks, and there are different uh, modules, we call them, that focus on the different elements of the program. So the foundations, as I mentioned, that sets the stage for developing good research habits and a good understanding of the field and the terms that we use. Um, and then we really take you into how to explore different kinds of records, immigration records, census records, things that you may have already dealt with. But we're going to teach you how to better use them, how to find find other records that are related to them that you may not have thought to look for. Uh, we're also going to cover records that are typically not always found online. So many of you, I'm sure, have done some online research, and that's great. But there's a whole world out there that's not online. Uh, I'll share an interesting statistic with you. There is an estimate that only about 10% of the historical records um, that are actually out there are online. So there's a whole lot of records out there that you're missing if you're only doing your research online. And this program covers uh, a little bit more in detail of how to expand your search beyond typical websites like Ancestry and Family Search. Uh, the program, the principles program, also talks a lot about genealogical writing. So genealogical writing is very important as we establish proof. Uh, having a written argument is key to that. So a written argument doesn't necessarily have to be a long argument, but you do need to present your proof in writing. And uh, having that in a narrative structure, the terminology that's used, the appropriate way to put that together um, is part of the principles program. Uh, we also talk a lot about transcribing and abstracting, making sure that you really are focusing in on what that record or what that source tells you, uh, using timelines to better plan your research and understand a ancestor's life um, and what other records you might look for based on where they were during what times and what they were doing. Uh, and all, we will also discuss planning and logging and reporting. So I'm sure many of us uh, have looked for something and found it or not found it and then gone back and looked again later on. So we're going to make sure that you develop, again, those good research habits, making sure that uh, you're planning your research well so that you're not missing out on sources, you're logging what you looked at, and that you're reporting efficiently, both in terms of what you found and what it means in terms of what you're looking for. 
And then we'll also talk about <clears throat> uh, genetic genealogy. So we will talk a little bit about ethnicity um, and then also the different types of tests and how they can help you advance your research. Um, the great thing about the principles program is that it gives you some real world practice working with great instructors and facilitators on some of the things that we just talked about. So logging and reporting, uh, creating timelines, looking at how other people have written things. We study a couple of different key articles in the program that will help demonstrate how to present evidence, how, how evidence is analyzed. Um, and then you also get some great assignments that help you focus on using different online databases that you may not have used before, um, and then also uh, developing your own research plans and moving forward, something that can really set the stage for good research habits. Uh, genetic genealogy is also a huge part of anyone who's doing family history research today. Uh, there are different types of testing. We do cover the different kinds of testing and what they are used for and what they're not used for. Uh, we'll also cover the ethnicity results and cover which testing companies and when to use them, uh, depending on your research problem. And then also ethics. So genetic genealogy is a changing field and there are ethics involved with taking DNA tests yourself, with asking others to take tests, and with sharing that information. Some of the key books that are required for the course are probably books that you may already have. Um, the Everything Guide to Online Genealogy uh, is a great tool by Kimberly Powell, who is one of our instructors in both the principles and the certificate programs. So you will get to uh, meet and interact with her. Uh, genealogy Standards is sort of our manual for standards in the, in the field. So this is sort of the guidebook uh, that gets updated every now and then. It was recently updated to include uh, standards related to genetic genealogy evidence. Uh, and then you'll also be working with Blaine Bettinger's Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy, uh, which is helpful for laying out the different kinds of DNA tests. And these are three great key texts that you'll use for the course and also for many years to come afterward. <clears throat> the Certificate in Genealogical Research program is our um, more advanced, uh, longer, and more rigorous program. So the course consists of four modules. Uh, the first focuses on genealogical methods, and then we go into evidence evaluation and documentation, and then focus on forensic genealogy, and then on genealogy as a profession, and some key skills that you need in terms of report writing and analysis. Um, again, we have many instructors and facilitators. They are nationally recognized experts, probably names that you have interacted with. Maybe you've seen their lectures before. Maybe you've written some or read some of their written materials. Uh, but the program does teach two current genealogy standards per the um, book on the prior page. Um, so, how do you know whether the certificate program is right for you? Um, again, looking at the quiz, but also um, taking a look at your experience previously. So that's a lot of what the quiz is based on, but essentially we, we would recommend that if you are going to consider taking the certificate program, that you have previously attended some conferences or local genealogy meetings, um, that you've done some on-site research. So many of you, um, I'm sure all of you have done online research. Um, if you've been to libraries and archives uh, and have experience working with, with records on site, both manuscript and microfilm, then the certificate program may be more appropriate for you. Um, if you have <clears throat> um, experience with genealogical publications as well, so if you've read different National Genealogical Society Quarterly, National Genealogical Society Magazine, maybe your state journal, um, those are great ways to further your skills, but if you have been reading those for several years, then the certificate program may be best for you. Uh, also, we want to make sure that you have access to the internet, um, that you have good computer literacy skills. This is an online program, so that those are important to make sure that you can uh, advance in the program. Uh, 
Um, similarly to the principles program, the first module focuses on those developing those good research habits. So how do you think as a genealogist? How do you analyze as a genealogist? Uh, looking at the life cycle of a research project from planning to logging to analysis, uh, what does that mean? Um, also looking at DNA and how that can be used to solve problems and then learning some techniques and learning from looking at others' work to analyze and solve those more complex problems. The second module is about evidence analysis. So really being able to understand the difference between a piece of information, the source you got it from, um, whether that constitutes as proof or whether it's just evidence that suggests a response to a research question. Those are all the things that you'll learn in the evidence evaluation module. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to look at how credible different sources are, what bias people had in terms of what information they provided, and really understand how to analyze information based on all of these factors. The forensic genealogy module um, is personally one of my favorite. Uh, we do teach quite a bit about DNA, but forensic genealogy also covers a wider array of topics as well. So when we talk about forensic genealogy, we talk about genealogy as it pertains to the law and to sometimes to the living. So DNA testing absolutely falls under that category, um, but so do different other topics that can play into future occupations, um, such as identifying or locating missing heirs, um, working with people who are living, finding them in public records, um, and all of these different categories, DNA and working with the living, require a really strong uh, foundation and understanding of privacy considerations and ethics. So while we teach all of these things, we also focus quite a bit on ethics um, and the issues that can come up as you're doing this type of work. Um, some of the DNA aspects of the forensic genealogy module focus on using DNA to solve problems, including unknown parentage, um, looking at different strategies to do that. One of them is using a chromosome browser. We also will look at techniques such as using shared match lists, um, <clears throat> targeted testing, and different elements such as those. Uh, the last module of the program uh, is called Genealogy as a Profession. I am one of the instructors in this module, uh, in addition to being the program director. Um, and this module is great if you're considering um, being a professional genealogist, but it's also essential even if you don't have aspirations of taking clients, uh, perhaps if you are a librarian um, or if you are simply just interested in, in advancing your skills, you can work on your own family history research. Uh, this module teaches how to assemble reports, which is a great skill to have even if you are not taking on clients. Uh, it also teaches you how to work at an on-site repository. We have a repository visit that's incorporated as part of the curriculum. Um, and then we also talk about different elements that are related to taking on genealogy as a profession, ethics, contracts, um, how to advance your business, marketing, um, and then further education and BCG, Board for Certification of genealogist certification. Um, one of the great things about this program that a lot of the students really love is we do a live classroom session with several practicing professional genealogists where the students can send in questions and ask anything you want to ask about how to run a genealogy business, how you would handle a certain situation. It's a great session. Um, it's one of the students' favorites. Uh, the books for the certificate program, some of them are going to look familiar. So we have the Genealogy Standards book and the Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy. Uh, in addition to those two, we also have Mastering Genealogical Documentation, which is by Tom Jones, one of the top genealogists in our field. Uh, and he, this book focuses on uh, the evidence analysis aspect. So really mastering documentation, analysis, uh, evidence, proof. And then we have professional genealogy, which is uh, a manual in our field that covers a whole array of topics um, that is used throughout the course um, and especially in module four. But that again is something that as a genealogist you will refer back to. I pick mine up off the shelf probably daily. Um, it's a great book to have as are the rest of these. 
Uh, we have a couple of uh, individuals who have gone through the program and received a BU genealogical research certificate. Uh, Mary Tedesco is one of them. Some of you may recognize her from uh, Genealogy Roadshow. She was one of the hosts. Um, so she's a, a Boston native and also um, highly recommends the course. Uh, she has uh, cited it as being instrumental to her career as a speaker and author and a genealogist. Uh, another of the BU certificate program graduates is a professional genealogist, Michael McClellan, um, and he is he currently holds a couple of different roles. Uh, he's based out of Massachusetts as well, uh, but he also cites the program um, as being instrumental in his career. He is now a, um, <clears throat> a, a working genealogist as well um, and uh, has very much enjoyed what has come for, for him after completing the program. Uh, these are some of our instructors. Uh, again, I'm the program director and I instruct in genealogy as a profession. Uh, all of these instructors here are um, instructing in either the principals program or the certificate program. Some, in, some of them instruct in both, uh, Allison Royale and Shannon Green uh, and Kimberly Powell. Uh, but these are your instructors. Uh, you also will interact with facilitators. So some of your facilitators are also some of the people you see here. They teach as instructors in one module and facilitate in others. So there's a lot of great experience um, uh, in different elements of genealogy. Some people are more focused on forensics, some more focused on writing, some are educators and lecturers, um, some have worked in government positions. Um, so you have a lot of great experience here from your academic uh, professional groups. All right, great. Thank you so much, Melissa. And at this time, we'll turn the presentation over to our enrollment advisor, uh, Amber, to give some information about course logistics. Great, thank you, Sarah. Um, yes, so for the courses, uh, we'll start with the approximate time commitment. The principals program will, um, you would need approximately seven to 10 hours per week. Uh, the certificate program would be more like 15 to, thir 15 to 30 hours, excuse me. And that is, um, the course is asynchronous. So what that means is there's gonna be no set time that you have to log in. So the seven to 10 and the 15 to 30, we'll, we'll, you will organize that by your schedule, but you will have to meet weekly deadlines. So it is asynchronous, but during the week you have, you can spend the time when you have it in your schedule. Um, how the course works, well, you will um, <clears throat> communicate with the faculty via our discussion boards and internal message system. So you'll get um, answers to your questions that way. You'll have discussions with the other students. You'll be able to talk back and forth to each other. So it's a very interactive um, course with that aspect to it. Um, we do recommend that you use Firefox um, or Google Chrome for when you're logging into the course. You're gonna log into our course on Blackboard. Um, so you're not downloading anything. You're going to log in each day to, to Blackboard. The, and the in, courses are instructor-led in the sense that you will work with Melissa and the other instructors that she just spoke of. Um, so, you know, you will get feedback from them. They'll, gra you, they'll grade your assignments. Um, it'll be very, you'll have a lot of um, activities with them as well. Um, we do offer both of the programs three times a year. So they do start on the same date um, each January, May, and September. Uh, the next the session that we're enrolling um, in right now is our May session. That is considered summer, and that is the start date of May 12th. Oh, there, there we go. Thank you. So, so the start date is May 12th. Um, the enrollment deadline then is April 17th. Uh, there's the tuition there, so it's $995 for our principal's program, and then $2,695 for the certificate. And there is the fall session dates. Those are the start date again, September 8th for both. Uh, that enrollment deadline is August 14th. Again, the same pricing, and there would be the website if you'd want to go um, and look at any of this information. 
So we are rolling out a, um, some of you may be familiar that we do offer payment plans throughout the, um, for the different sessions. Um, because of the current climate, we wanted to be able to um, extend a special payment plan for you. Um, because of the uncertainty, it might help offset the financial investment we're offering, um, something that we've never done in the past, which is uh, an opportunity for you to enroll and pay while you're actually in the course. So how that would work would be for the summer session only, um, we're offering this now. Um, so as we just spoke, the deadline is April 17th. So if you enroll by April 17th for the principals, you could make a payment on April 17th and then again on May 17th. If you, any time prior to that, obviously you can opt for that two month payment plan too. So let's say you enrolled April 1st, your next payment would be due May 1st. Same with certificate, April 1st, May 1st, June 1st. So it's a just, we're trying to allow, you know, give you a little bit extra um, flexibility in your payments. Uh, also, we offer payment options, the monthly payment plans what we just discussed. Uh, the third party, party payments would be, um, let's say your employer um, wanted to sponsor you and pay for the, the course, we allow for that. Um, there are education loans, it's a Sally Mae government loan that's approved for these. That um, information can be found on our website as well. And then military benefits, we are um, we do accept tuition funding through those as well. Um, this is a great bonus for those of you that belong to these associations. You do get a 10% tuition reduction for um, American Ancestors, the APG, uh, NGS and California Genealogical, Southern California Society. So those, um, to use those on the website, there will be a promo code that you would then put in your shopping cart and that would take your tuition off. And then if you did have any other questions for us, we have a wonderful enrollment team. Um, we can be reached at that email, bostonuniversity at mymax.net. Our phone, 617-502-8822. I'm sure you can read this. And then that is our website. So thank you. All right, thank you so much, Amber. And thank you, Melissa, for the valuable information about the genealogy program. Uh, at this time, we will now begin our Q&A session. So just as a reminder, uh, we have a few questions we've been answering throughout the duration of the presentation, uh, but please use your questions box on the right-hand side of your screen to ask any questions. Um, so we have a, quite a few that have come in already, so we'll dive right in here. Um, we'll start with, uh, for you, Melissa, um, this person is asking, will we need to download any genealogical software for the programs? Uh, you don't need to download any software. We provide you with logins to some different sites um, and some suggestions for some sites to look at, but there isn't any particular software specifically that would need to be downloaded. However, you will be using different websites, but everything is pretty much web-based. Great, thank you. Um, and Melissa, this one is also for you. This person says, I am a forensic DNA analyst and I'm looking to provide added service to my department if we ever have cold cases or extreme danger to public cases in which genealogical services may be tapped. Is this program suitable for someone of that venture? Um, if you are looking to you know, further advance your skills in, in tracing people and using DNA testing to, um, to make identifications, you know, this program does provide the, the foundations for that um, as well. So there are you know, other, other educational options you know, post BU um, that would also be, be recommended. But yes, this would definitely provide some of the, the key foundations that you would need to make those kinship determinations. Great, thank you. Um, and this next question is a few different uh, questions from the same person here. They're asking, um, is Blackboard, in the case of Blackboard, are you able to actually see the instructor um, or is this just like a webinar session? 
um, and is it closed captioned because um, this person says uh, for hard of hearing folks? Um, so I will uh, defer to Barbara on um, some of the accommodations that BU offers, um, So, but that should not be a problem at all. Um, as far as Blackboard goes, um, Blackboard is a place where all of the course materials are stored. Within Blackboard, you also have a lot of videos. There are lots of instructional videos where you do see the instructor, but it's not a live type of thing. Um, our instructors also, some of them offer office hours where you can interact with them via a chat. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there are also live classrooms, which are face-to-face -face, um, where you can interact live with an instructor. Um, but the majority of the material, because it's self-paced um, and it, it's not a, a course where you have to be online at a certain time, um, with the exception of some of the live webinar or live classrooms, which are um, optional, uh, but recommended. Um, so, you know, most of the course is in Blackboard, but it's not a webinar format. So it's a lot of reading material, participating in discussion groups, um, doing your assignments, whether they are quizzes or papers, there's a lot of variety. Um, and then, you know, having that interaction through the videos and the live classrooms and the office hours. Great, thank you. Um, and Melissa, also for you, um, how many students are in a typical semester for the 15-week program, if you can give maybe a, a ballpark from your experience? Um, I believe total, you know, we can range from anywhere from 120 to 180 students, um, but they are broken into smaller groups, so you will be working with a um, a smaller group of people that you'll be constantly interacting with on the discussion boards. Um, and uh, so it's not it's not that everyone is put together. Everyone's taking the same material um, and taking all of the same assessments and quizzes, but you will have a smaller group that you interact with as part of the program. Great, thank you. Um, and the next question for you, Melissa, um, this person says, I've been actively working on my own family history for a few years now, and I'm currently reading through assigned books for the certificate program. So which program would you then recommend? It's hard to say. Um, I mean, I would definitely take a look at the quiz. Um, you know, if you've been if you've been reading some of the books, that's definitely a great head start for either of the um, the, the sessions, but I would definitely try taking a look at the quiz that's on the website. That should give you a better idea based on a lot of factors, um, you know, not just um, what's what you're, you know, reading or working on, but your prior research experience and uh, knowledge of DNA and things like that. Um, so I would definitely defer to the quiz on that one because it's, it's really hard to tell from, you know, a small amount of information. Thank you. Um, and Amber, this question I will pass to you. This person's asking, are the books included with the tuition? Uh, thank you for that question. They are not off, um, they are not included with the um, tuition for the enrollment for summer at this point, no. So they would be um, purchased from your favorite bookseller. Um, and then you can also see, you can see on the website where um, click on the links and you can purchase the books. Great, thank you, Amber. Um, and for you, Melissa, it's probably a question a few people have had um, asked now. Can you talk about the different career opportunities within this field? Sure, so there are definitely quite a few people who go through the BU program and opt to be a practicing professional genealogist, similar to what I do. Um, so I would say the majority of people who are practicing genealogists have their own business, um, you know, whether it's just, you know, John Smith genealogist uh, and the person sets up a website or they have a more branded company. Um, but most people are solo practitioners, you know, working alone and, and are entrepreneurs. Um, however, with the introduction of some bigger genealogy companies. There are now many genealogists who work for a large firm like Ancestry or Legacy Tree genealogists who are full-time employees of those companies and who do 
genealogy client research in a certain field, maybe they're a DNA specialist, maybe they're a New Jersey specialist or a German. Um, and, you know, so if you're looking at practicing as a professional, those are are some of the options. Um, there are also some uh, positions available with government agencies. Uh, for example, the Bureau of Indian Affairs employs some genealogists. There are many um, genealogy groups like uh, lineage societies and, and other you know, larger societies that employ genealogists to do client work or to review applications. Um, and you know, there are also other options as well. So some people you know, aspire to be a genealogy librarian and maybe they are you know, taking another program to help with that as well. Um, and then there are there are others that may want to do genealogy as a part-time profession, uh, maybe doing some writing or teaching or lecturing, and they want to advance their skills so that they can do that. So there, there are a lot of different options out there. Um, DNA is definitely a hot topic now, so there are lots of people that are becoming DNA specialists, um, but those DNA specialists also need to have fine-tuned genealogy skills as well. So <clears throat> um, there's lots of options out there. Those are kind of just a few of them, and there are lots of different specialties within the genealogy field as well. Great, thank you so much. Um, so this person is asking, um, I will well, saying, I'm a federal law enforcement, uh, retired federal law enforcement, but I'm interested in forensic genetic genealogy. Is this discussed at all in the principles course? Um, so the principles course discusses um, some of the career options, but it doesn't really get into into them in detail. So it, it's it's touched on in principles, but it's really explored a whole lot more in the certificate program. Uh, and the certificate program focuses on those two elements, you know, forensic genealogy as a whole and the different kinds of professions, and then also focuses on genetic genealogy in terms of refining the skills needed to master that that expertise. Thank you. And uh, also for you, uh, for this certificate program, is the 15 to 30 hours a week including uh, homework assignments or is everything done during the class time? Um, so this this is kind of a self-paced program. So there there isn't really so much class time other than, you know, your class time really is the reading and going into the materials, um, participating in the discussion group. So we don't have set class times except for, again, when we might have a live classroom session that's about an hour and you can either do that live or watch the recorded version. Um, but that, that would be sort of a total number of hours you can anticipate to spend on the program overall. Thank you. And are there weekly tests or weekly projects that will need to be turned in as well for either course? Uh, so both courses do have uh, a number of different um, assignments and assessments and projects. So some, some modules in, in certain courses are more heavy on ha having assignments where you're writing a, a couple page paper or um, you know, completing a research report, and some are more focused on completing a, a test or a quiz based on something you learned. So there's a, a wide variety of what we refer to as assignments and assessments, um, and some of them are you know, multiple choice, you know, automatically graded. Some of them you get great feedback from an instructor who comments on your paper and, you know, kind of guides you in terms of, you know, you did great in this section, here's some suggestions for this section. And that's one of the things we really pride ourselves on is the great feedback that our instructional team gives to the students. Um, <clears throat> so I hope that answers your question. But yes, there is quite a variety of assignments uh, due at various stages throughout uh, the programs for both programs. Great, thank you. Um, and this person is asking, how accessible are teachers or the faculty throughout the week if you have questions on your weekly assignments? Um, they're very accessible. Um, in my experience, most instructors and facilitators will get back to you within an hour, a couple hours. Um, so you're not waiting, you know, days and days to hear back from anyone. Um, the facilitators are 
they're basically there to guide you. So they're there to grade your assignments and to assist the instructors, but they also are there to comment on your discussion board posts and answer any questions you have. There's an internal messaging system in Blackboard that everything goes through, um, and they are very, very responsive um, to questions that the students have. Thank you. Um, and this person's asking, maybe you can give us a little uh, insight into your own profession. Um, Melissa, what is the job market like now for genealogists and what types of jobs are currently avail available? Maybe if, if you have just a, a high level uh, summary for that. Sure. Um, I mean, I definitely would say that it's it's increased over the years as companies like Ancestry Pro Genealogists and Legacy Tree Genealogists have started taking on more clients and have hired people. So a lot of their staff are people who are full-time employees, but they work remotely from their homes. So, I mean, the if you're looking at the job market five years ago versus now, I would say it's, it's definitely increased tremendously. Um, but again, most people who are professional genealogists are not employees, so they're not necessarily looking for a job, they're looking for clients. Um, but clients uh, are very abundant nowadays. Genealogy is, is one of the top hobbies in America, so there are a lot of people um, who are doing their own research and that get stuck and, and need some help. So there, there's definitely a lot of opportunity out there. Great, great answer, thank you. Um, and can you please tell us a little bit about the required field visit? Sure, so that is part of module four in the, um, the I'm sorry, in the certificate program. Um, and basically what we have students do is choose a repository where they will go and access a manuscript. So a manuscript being something that you can hold in your hand, like a, an old letter, an old diary, um, maybe an, an old will or a court record, something like that. Um, and you basically, we want you to learn how to use the catalog, what a visit to an archive is like, which is very different than walking into a, a courthouse or an office where you're going to request a vital record. So typically you are you know, looking at a catalog, looking at finding aids, you're interacting with an archivist, um, you're trying to figure out more about this collection and we have you make that site visit to a repository and then write a repository report that responds to certain things that we ask of you um, in the assignment instructions. And then that repository visit, the um, manuscript that you looked at, you derive a research question from that manuscript. So if it's a diary of um, Mary Smith who lived during the Civil War, you might ask a research question related to Mary Smith's life and then you pick up on that research question in the final assignment, which is um, a research report and that demonstrates your skills researching and analyzing and writing. Great, thank you so much. Um, this person's ask or saying, I've been doing genealogy for over 20 years and I've traced a number of friends' trees through Ancestry.com or local libraries. Um, is the seven-week course then uh, considered more of a waste of time or should they go directly to the certificate program? Um, well, it sounds like you, you do have... Um you know, quite a bit of experience. So based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like the certificate program might be right for you. But again, I would defer to the quiz because there are other elements that factor into that as well. So I would definitely take the quiz and see, um, visit the website for some more information and, and see what um, you think is best for you. And um, there also are enrollment advisors you can speak to as well for further insights on that. Great, thanks so much. Um, and this is a question uh, I think a lot of people have uh, on this webinar is, will we actually get to do any work with our own family trees? Um, so there are some assignments where you, um, you know, sort of choose a, choose a problem. Um, so some of the assignments, the one I just mentioned, the repository visit and the research report, that's not on your own family because we really want you to take something you're not familiar with um, and build upon it because that will further advance your skills. But there are um, definitely some, some assignments that um, can incorporate, um, especially in the principles program as you're doing different um, searches on new websites. There are de definitely ways Ways that you incorporate your own family's research into the course um, but again everything that you learn um, you know you're learning on different assignments that are presented to you but all of those skills are definitely transferable to your own family history research as well 
Great, thank you so much. Um, and this is a question a few people have had as well. Um, during the course, will we explore the African American history um, and the unique issues in finding those particular records? Um, there are both in the principles and the certificate program, um, there are assignments that focus on African American history. Um, so that is definitely covered in, in both curriculums. All right, and we have about 15 minutes left uh, for the duration of the webinar and lots of great questions coming in. So we'll continue to take um, as many questions as we can. Um, our next question here for you, Melissa, do you cover information that would be useful for utilizing genealogy for private investigation work? Uh, we do in this, um, the certificate program, module three, forensic genealogy does focus on um, researching the living and, and tracing the living. So there are some skills definitely there that, that would translate to private investigative work. Great, thank you so much. Um, and let's see here, our next question. Is the seven week course a requirement to take the 15 week course if you don't have any prior experience? It is not a requirement. Um, however, there are a lot of people who um, do take the uh, principles course, the seven week course, um, and then later on take the, um, the certificate course. So a good tip um, if you think you are thinking about taking the principles course, um, a good kind of bridge between principles and the certificate program is having maybe a semester or two off and having some some real world experience. So taking the skills that you learned in the principles program and actually going out to archives and libraries and doing that work on site and really having that experience working on problems and then going into the certificate program, the students who sort of take that approach tend to do, do well in, in both programs. Great, thank you. Um, and this person's asking, after completion of these courses, are there any resources offered to alumni of the program that are looking to start or advance their careers? Um, so as part of module four, we do focus quite a bit on sort of what's next, um, next steps for education and, and career planning. Um, however, there are um, there is an alumni group um, that you can join for people who have received the certificate program. Um, and there also are typically several Facebook groups for networking um, that each of the um, the student group set up um, after the completion of the program. So there are definitely some resources available. All right, thank you. And Amber, uh, this question is for you. Uh, this person says, I plan to enroll in the 15-week program for September. Uh, do you anticipate the book list or editions will remain the same as that is currently displayed on the website? Actually, that would probably be better for Melissa. I don't know if we're, she's anticipating any book changes. Um, so the, the books that we covered in here um, in the session today are the ones that will be used for the next um, next semester. There also is one text we may add as a recommended text, but it would not be a required text. Great. Thank you, Melissa. And do you recommend that they start reading them prior to the start or should they sort of progress through as they go through the modules? Um, it definitely doesn't hurt to read to read prior um, to read ahead, and um, many students may already have some of these books and may have already um, you know read some of the content. So there's definitely no harm in in reading prior to the start of the course. Great, thank you. Um, and for you, Melissa, does the 15 week course uh, just look at genealogy research in the United States, or do you cover international research as well? Um, so th there are um, some elements of the course that, that cover international research. So again, the, the course sort of focuses on, um, you know, honing in on good skills that are transferable to all kinds of 
different types of research, whether it's uh, focusing on an ethnic group or a religious group or another country or even a, a geographic location. Um, so a lot of the skills that we are teaching are more general. Um, so you know, we're not teaching specifics on a certain ethnicity. Um, however, we do like to touch on a variety of topics so that students get a variety of experience. But there are um, some assignments and, and cases that focus on immigration or you know research in, in other locations. All right, great. Thank you so much. And uh, we have another comment here from uh, another practicing professional genealogist, Connie, um, and she's asking, can you speak to your typical day-to-day -day activities? Um, are most professional genealogists able to work by distance if living in a, a smaller center, or is access to an archive in a large center desirable? That's a great question. Um, so it really kind of depends on what your specialty is. So I know a lot of uh, genealogists who specialize in you know, working with DNA, difficult cases, and a lot of what they do is online. Um, and of course, you know, as you're tracing people who are down a line that you think is the correct line for you, you may need records from different places and may have to order them or hire a subcontractor to get them. Um, but there are other specialties where it really does require um, you know, you being in a certain location. Uh, for example, I focus on New Jersey genealogy as one of my specialties, and I don't feel that I could do that if I lived in uh, Florida or somewhere else. Uh, there is definitely a need for on-site access. Um, so it really kind of depends on what you do um, and uh, and what you're specializing in, um, but there definitely are, are a lot, there's a lot more you can do online, a lot of the, the legwork um, and, you know, setting, setting up your your research plan and doing some research online, but there often is a need to do um, research on site as well. Thank you very much. Um, and for you, Melissa, uh, can you maybe briefly describe the the way that one would go about becoming a certified genealogist, uh, maybe a few different steps they might have to take to be board certified? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so the Boston University um, Certificate in Genealogical Research is not the same thing as being a certified genealogist. Um, so you are a certificate holder if you complete the program um, and you're a graduate of, of the program, but becoming a certified genealogist means you have a credential. It means you have the letters CG after your name. Um, <clears throat> and that is a process that is basically seven part portfolio that you submit to a body of judges who reviews your work and it's a it's a pass fail um, and either you pass and become credentialed or you fail and can you know try again another another time um, and after you've received your comments and processed them so it's it's basically a, a process that focuses on um, analyzing you know, sources, coming up with research plans. There's a couple different um, requirements. One is a research report, one is a case study, and one is a kinship determination project. Um, so if you wanna know more about that, there's a free guide you can download um, from the BCG, Board for Certification of Genealogists website, um, that's called the Application Guide, and it goes through all the different elements of um, what it takes to submit a portfolio um, for certification. Great, thank you so much. Um, and Amber, I'm gonna pass this question to you. A few people have asked this question. Is there any financial assistance available for the tuition costs? And I know I think we've covered a few different options in the in the webinar. Right, so the, um, the Sally Mae government loan is approved for these programs. Uh, some people are curious about using FAST for traditional financial aid um, is not approved for these courses because these are non-credit courses. So that's um, a distinction there. So the Sally Mae loan is in essence like a financial, um, federal financial loan. Uh, also, the um, that would be the loan, um, then the payment plans obviously, and then the discount with the associations. 
Thank you so much, Amber. Mm -hmm. All right, um, in just a few minutes left here, so we'll get through as many as we can in about the next five minutes or so. Um, this is an interesting question here. A few people have had uh, different iterations of this, Melissa. Um, is there a particular degree that one would need to obtain to find employment in the genealogy field, or does the certificate program uh, usually suffice for that? Um, there is not a particular degree. A lot of people in the genealogy fields are coming to the field um, as a, either a second career after retiring or or being, you know, home taking care of a family for many years. Um, some people, you know, are prior teachers. Some people are business people. There are attorneys. There are doctors. Um, so there really is such a, a wide array of people that have come to the genealogy field with different backgrounds. Um, so I would say there there really isn't. Um, you know anything that that I would say is is definitely a requirement. Um, if you complete the BU certificate program, um, that absolutely um, you know is is definitely a plus for anyone who might be seeking to um, you know hire you or you know work with you uh, a client whether it's a client or or a future employer. Um, definitely for sure the BU credential or BU program uh, the certificate would be a selling point. Thank you. Um, and this is a question uh, quite a few people have also asked. I don't know if maybe you could touch upon this again. Um, what exactly are repositories and where would they be located? And do you think that with the current economic uh, climate that we're experiencing, that these would still be open for people to uh, attend? So that's a great question. And it's something that we just recently addressed in the course. So because of the current events that are happening we have had to um, modify the assignment a little bit um, and you know because there are some people who can't get to a repository because many places have closed so you know, a repository would be you know a local historical society it would could be your state archive it could be a university library or university archive um, and as we all know many of those places are closed now so that final um, module and the assignments within it did did need to be modified this this semester um, and we're always very proactive if there's if there's an issue or if there's someone who for some reason can't can't get to a repository um, you know we're, we try to be as accommodating as we can uh, and this this semester uh, obviously we had to be accommodating with and and revamp the assignment a little bit so we'll always we'll always accommodate where we can um, and you know going forward we'll we'll evaluate that you know as as things evolve with what's happening these days Great answer. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and this question uh, for you, Melissa, can I work ahead if I know I will be unavailable for one week during the course? Um, that's something that it kind of depends on where you're at in the course. So, you know, within a module, um, some of the assignments are timed release because you need information point A to do assignment B, if that makes sense. Um, but <clears throat> um, you definitely can work ahead. It's it's self-paced. So if you know you have a busy week and you want to get all of your work done, you know, the weekend prior, that's definitely a possibility. Um, for the the repository visit, we do, uh, even though that is in module four, we do announce that early on so that people can at least get the visit in early on. Uh, they may not write their paper until later, but um, we do we do try to give people as much notice as we can for that one because it does require an on-site visit and some research prior to the on-site visit. Um, but you know, in most cases, you you can work ahead and and if you know you're going to be busy, you can be self-paced. And if it's something that is in a a different module, um, you know, you'd have to kind of work that out with the instructor. It may not always work that you could work that far ahead because you don't have the knowledge yet because everything is, everything builds off of the, the prior lesson. Um, so it, it really depends on what it is, but we do try to work with all of our students. Great, thank you. Um, and probably our last question for today um, is how much offline research is required for um, each course? 
Um, so for for the the repository visit for module four of the certificate program, that's really the only thing that requires uh, an on-site visit anywhere. Um, there are you know parts of the research report that if you wanted to do on-site research, um, you know in additional places, you, you certainly could, but it's not a requirement. Um, but it's really just the repository report in the certificate program that requires an on-site presence. All right, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, if we did not get to your questions today, please feel free to um, follow up with our office here at the information provided on uh, this slide here. Um, Amber will be happy to answer any questions or escalate any questions um, to uh, the instructors or um, Melissa, and we will certainly get to you that way. Um, and with that, that concludes our webinar for today. Uh, just thank you all again for joining us, and we hope the information presented will help guide you in your genealogical journey and whatever path that might take. Um, and as, just as a reminder, we will be sending a recording to each one of you who registered uh, for today's presentation. So uh, keep a lookout in your inbox tomorrow afternoon for, for that. I uh, hope everyone stays well and have a pleasant afternoon.